Hello and welcome to book four of John Milton's Paradise Lost. My name is Cathy Williams DeVries. I have a postgraduate degree in Shakespeare Studies and as part of my studies I studied Paradise Lost and this is a full reading of the work. So this is book four. Oh for that warning voice which he who saw the apocalypse heard cry in heaven aloud. Then when the dragon put to second route came furious down to be revenged on men, woe to the inhabitants on earth that now, while time was, our first parents had been warned the coming of their secret foe, and scape happily so scaped his mortal snare. For now Satan, now first inflamed with rage, came down, the tempter, ere the accuser of mankind, to wreak on innocent frail man his loss of that first battle and his flight to hell. Yet not rejoicing in his speed, though bold, far off and fearless, nor with cause to boast, begins his dire attempt, which neither birth nor rolling boils in his tumultuous breast, and like a devilish engine, back recoils upon himself. Horror and doubt distract his troubled thoughts, and from the bottom stir the hell within him. For within him hell he brings, and round about him, nor from hell one step no more than from himself can fly by change of place. Now conscience wakes despair that slumbers, wakes the bitter memory of what he was, what is, and what must be, worse, of worse deeds, worse sufferings must ensue. Sometimes towards Eden, which now is in his view lay pleasant, his greed look he fixes sad. Sometimes towards heaven and the full blazing sun, which now sat high on his meridian tower, then much revolving, thus in sighs began. O thou that with surpassing glory crowned, looks from thy sole dominion like the God of this new world, at whose sight all the stars hide their diminished heads. To thee I call, but with no friendly voice, and add thy name, O sun, to tell thee how I hate thy beams that brought to my remembrance from what state I fell, how glorious once above thy sphere, till pride and worse ambition threw me down, warring in heaven against the heaven's matchless king. Ah, wherefore, he deserved no such return from me, whom he created what I was, in that bright eminence, and with his good upbraided none, nor was his service hard. What could be less than to afford him praise, the easiest recompense, and pay him thanks, how due, yet all his good proved ill in me, and wrought but malice, lifted up so high, I stained subjection, and thought one step higher would set me highest, and in a moment quit the debt immense of endless gratitude, so burdensome still paying, still to owe, forgetful what from him I still received, and understood not that a grateful mind, by owing, owes not, but still pays, at once indebted and discharged, what burden then? Oh, had his powerful destiny ordained me some inferior angel! I had stood, then happy, no unbounded hope had raised ambition, yet why not? Some other power as great might have aspired, and me through mean drawn to his part, but other powers as great fell not, but stand unshaken from within or from without, to all temptations armed. Hadst thou the same free will and power to stand, thou hadst. Whom hast thou then, or what to accuse, but heaven's free love dealt equally to all? But then his love a curse, since love or hate to me alike, it deals eternal woe. Nay, cursed be thou, since against his thy will chose freely what it now so justly rules. Me, miserable, which way shall I fly, infinite wrath or infinite despair? Which way I fly is hell, myself am hell, and in the lowest deep, a lower deep still threatening to devour me, opens wide, to which hell I suffer seems a heaven. O oh, then at last relent, is there no place left for repentance, none for pardon left? None left but by submission, and that word disdain forbids me, and my dread of shame among the spirits beneath, whom I seduced with other promises and other vaunts, than to submit, boasting I could subdue the omnipotent. I, me, they little know how dearly I abide that boast so vain, under what torments I in inwardly I groan. While they adore me on the throne of hell, with diadem and sceptre high advanced, the lowest still I fall, only supreme in misery, such joy ambition finds, but say I could repent and could obtain by act of grace my former state. How soon would height recall high thoughts, 
How soon unsay what feigned submission swore, else would recant vows made in pain as violent and void. For never can true reconcilement grow where wounds of deadly hate have pierced so deep, which would but lead me to a worse relapse and heavier fall. So should I purchase dear short intermission brought with double smart. This knows my punisher, therefore as far from granting me as I from begging peace, all hope excluded thus. Behold, instead of us outcast, exiled his new delight, mankind created, and for him this world. So farewell hope, and with hope farewell fear, farewell remorse, all good to me is lost. Evil be thou, my good, by thee at least divided empire with heaven's king I hold by thee, and more than half perhaps will reign as man ere long, and this new world shall know. Thus while he spake, each passion dimmed his face, thrice changed with pale ire, envy and despair, which marred his borrowed visage, and betrayed him counterfeit, if any, high be if any eye beheld. For heavenly minds from such distempers foul are ever clear, whereof he soon aware each perturbation smoothed with outward calm, artificer of fraud, and was the first that practised falsehood under saintly show, deep malice to conceal, couched with revenge, yet not enough had practised to deceive Uriel once warned, whose eye pursued him down the way he went, and on the Assyrian mount saw him disfigured, more than could befall spirit of happy sort. His gestures fierce, he marked and mad demeanour, then alone, as he supposed, all unobserved, unseen. So on he fares, and to the border comes of Eden, where delicious paradise, now nearer, crowns with her enclosure green, as with a rural mound the, sh camp the champagne head. Of a steep wilderness, whose hairy sides, with thicket overgrown, grotesque and wild, access denied, and overhead upgrew insuperable height of loftiest shade, cedar and pine and fir and branching palm, a sylvan scene, and as the ranks ascend, shade above shade, a woody theatre of stateliest view, yet higher than their tops the verdurous wall of paradise upsprung, which to our general sire gave prospect large into his nether empire neighbouring round. And higher than that wall a circling row of goodliest trees laden with fairest fruit, blossoms and fruits at once of golden hue appeared, with gay enamelled colours mixed on which the sun more glad impressed his beams than in fair evening cloud or humid bow. When God hath showered the earth, so lovely seemed that landscape, and of pure now purer air meets his approach. And to the hearted spires, vernal delight and joy, able to drive all sadness but despair. Now gentle gales fanning their odoriferous Wings dispense native perfumes, and whisper whence they stole those balmy spoils. As when to them who sail beyond the Cape of Hope, and now are past Mozambique, off at sea north-west winds blow, Sabian odours from the spicy shore of Araby the Blessed. With such delay well pleased they slack their course, and many a league cheered with the grateful smell old ocean smiles. So entertain those odorous sweets, the fiend who came their bane, though with them better pleased than Osmodius with the fishy fume that drove him, though enamoured from the spouse of Tobit's son, and with a vengeance set from Medea post to Egypt there fast bound. Now to the ascent of that steep savage hill Satan had journeyed on, pensive and slow, but further away found none, so thick and twined as one continental break. The undergrowth of shrubs and tangling bushes had perplexed all path of man or beast that passed that way. One gate there only was, and that looked east on the other side, which when the arch felon saw, drew entrance he disdained, and in contempt at one slight bound, high overleaped, all bound, of hill or highest wall, and sheer within lights on his feet, as when a prowling wolf whom hunger drives to seek new haunt for prey, watching where shepherds pen their flocks at eaves in hurdled coats amid the fields secure, leaps all the fence with ease into the field, or as a thief bent to unhoard the cash of some rich burgher, whose substantial doors, cross-barred and bolted fast, fear no assault, in at the window climbs, or all the tithes, 
So clothed this first grand thief into God's fold, so since into his church lewd hirelings climb. Thence up he flew, and on the tree of life, the middle tree, and highest there that grew, sat like a cormorant. Yet not true life thereby regained, but sad devising death to him that lived. Nor on the virtue thought of that life-giving plant, but only used for prospect. What well used had been the pledge of immortality. So little knows any but God alone to value right the good before him, but perverts best things to worst abuse, or to their meanest use. Beneath him with new wonder now he views, to all delight of humid sense exposed, in narrow room nature's whole wealth, yea more, as heaven on earth, for blissful paradise of God, the, the garden was, by him in the east of Eden planted. Eden stretched her line from Oran eastward to the royal towers of great Seleucia, built by Grecian kings, or where the sons of Eden long before dwelt in Telesar. In this pleasant soil, his far more pleasant garden God ordained. Out of the fertile ground he calls to grow all trees of noblest kind for sight, smell, taste. And all amid them stood the tree of life, high eminent, blooming ambrosial fruit of vegetable gold. And next to life, our death, the tree of knowledge, grew fast by. Knowledge of good brought dear by knowing ill. Southward through Eden went a river large, nor changed his course, but through the shaggy hill passed underneath and gulfed. For God had thrown that mountain as his garden mould, high roused, high raised upon the rapid, rapid current, which through veins of porous earth, with kindly thirst updrawn, rose a fresh fountain, and with many a rill watered the garden. Thence united fell down the steep glade, and met the nether flood, which from his darksome passage now appears and now divided into four main streams runs diverse, wandering many a famous realm and country whereof he needs no account, but rather to tell how, if art could tell, how from that sapphire fount the crisped brooks, rolling on orient pearl and sands of gold, with mazy error under pendant shades, ran nectar visiting each plant, and fed flowers worthy of paradise, which not nice art in beds and curious knots, but nature boon poured forth profuse on hill and dale and plain. Both where the morning sun first warmly smote the open field, and where the unpierced shade embrowned the new tide, noontide bowers. Thus was this place a happy rural seat of various view, groves whose rich trees wept odorous gums and balm, others whose fruit burnished with golden rind hung amiable, Hesperian fables true. If true here only, and of delicious taste betwixt them lawns or level downs, and flocks grazing the tender herb were interposed, or palmy hillock, or the flowery lap of some irriguous valley spread her store, flowers of all hue, and without thorn the rose, another side, umbragious grots and caves, of cool recess, o'er which the mantling vine lays forth her purple grape, and gently creeps luxurious, meanwhile murmuring waters fall down the slope hills, dispersed or in a lake, that to the fringed bank with myrt myrtle crowned, her crystal mirror holds, unite their streams, the birds their choir apply, airs, vernal airs, breathing the smell of field and grove, attune the trembling leaves, while universal pan, knit with the graces and the hours in dance, look upon, look at, lead, led on the eternal spring. Not that fair field of Enna, where Proserpine, gathering flowers herself, a fairer flower by gloomy dis was gathered, which cost Ceres all that pain to seek her through the world. Not that sweet grove of Daphne by Orontes, and the inspired Castalian spring, might with this paradise of Eden strive, nor the Nicene isle girt with the river Triton, where old Cham, who Gentiles Ammon call and Libyan Joe, hid Amalthea and her florid son, young Bacchus from his stepdame Rhea's eye, nor where Abassan kings with their issue guard, Mount Amara, though this by some supposed true paradise under the Ethiop line by Nilus head, enclosed with shining rock, a whole day's journey high, but wide remote from this Assyrian garden, where the fiends stood undelighted, all delight, all kind of living creatures new to sight and strange, two of far nobler shape, erect and tall, 
godlike erect, with native honour clad in naked majesty, seems lords of, seemed lords of all, and worthy seemed, for in their looks divine the image of their glorious maker shone, truth, wisdom, sanctitude, severe and pure, severe but in true filial freedom placed, whence true authority in men, though both not equal as their sex not equal seemed, for contemplation he and valour formed, for softness she and sweet attractive grace, he for God only, she for God in him. His fair large front and eye sublime declared absolute rule, and hyacinthine locks round from his parted forelocks manly hung, clustering, but not beneath his shoulders broad. She is a veil down to the slender waist, her unadorned golden tresses wore, to set dishevelled, but in wanted ringlets waved as the vine curls her tendrils, which implied subjection, but required with gentle sway, and by her yielded, by him best received, yielded with coy submission, modest pride, and sweet reluctant amorous delay. Nor those mysterious parts were then concealed, then was not guilty shame, dishonour, shame of nature's works, honourable, honour dishonourable, sin bred, how have ye troubled all mankind with shows instead, mere shows of seeming pure, and banished from man's life, his happiest life, simplicity and spotless innocence. So passed they naked on, nor shunned the sight of God or angel, for they thought no ill. So hand in hand they passed, the loveliest pair that ever since in love's embraces met, Adam, the goodliest man of men since born, his sons, the fairest of her daughters, Eve. Under a tuft of shade that on a green stood whispering soft, by a fresh mountain side, they sat them down, and after no more toil of their sweet gardening labour than sufficed to recommend cool zephyr, and made ease more easy, wholesome thirst, and appetite more graceful, grateful, to their supper fruits they fell, nectarine fruits, which the compliant boughs wow. yielded them, sighed long as they sat reclined on the soft downy bank damasked with flowers. The savoury pulp they chew, and in the rind, still as they thirsted, scooped the brimming stream. Nor gentle purpose, nor endearing smiles wanted, nor youthful dalliance as beseems fair couple, linked in happy nuptial league, alone as they. About them frisk played all beasts of the earth, since wild and of all chase, in wood or wilderness, forest or den, sporting the lion rant, and in his paw dandled the kid, bears, tigers, ounces, pards, gambled before them, the unwieldy elephant, to make their mirth, used all his might, and wreathed his live proboscis, close the serpent sly insinuating, wove with Gordian twine his braided train, and of his fatal guile gave proof unheeded, Others on the grass, couched and now filled, with pasture gazing sat, or bed ward ruminating. For the sun declined, was hasting now with prone career to the ocean isles, and in the ever ascending scale of heaven the stars that usher evening rose. When Satan still in gaze, as first he stood, scarce thus at length failed, speech recovered sad. O oh hell, what do mine eyes with grief behold, into our room of bliss thus high advanced, creatures of other mould, earth-born perhaps, not spirit, yet to heavenly spirits bright, little inferior, whom my thoughts pursue with wonder, and could love, so lively shines in them divine resemblance, and such grace the hand that formed them on their shape hath poured, ah, gentle pair, ye little think how nigh your change approaches, when all these delights will vanish and deliver ye to woe. More woe, the more your taste is now of joy. Happy, but for so happy, ill-secured, long to continue, and this high seat your heaven, ill-fenced for heaven, uh -huh. to keep out such a foe as now is entered. Yet no purposed foe to you, whom I could pity thus forlorn, though I unpitied. League with you I seek, and mutual amity, so straight, so close, that I with you must dwell, or you with me. Henceforth my dwelling haply may not please like this fair paradise, your sense, yet such except your maker's work. He gave it me, which I as freely give. Hell shall unfold to entertain you too, her widest gates, and send forth all her kings. There will be room. Not like these narrow limits to receive your numerous offspring. If no better place, thank him who puts me loath to this revenge. 
on you who wronged me not for him who wronged. And should I at your harmless innocence melt as I do, yet public reason just, honour an empire with revenge and large, by conquering this new world, compels me now to do what else thou damned I should abhor. So spake the fiend, and with necessity the tyrant's plea excused his devilish deeds. Then from his lofty stand on that high tree, down he alights among the sportful herd of those four-footed kinds, himself now one, now other, as their shapes serve best his end, nearer to view his prey, and unaspired to mark what of their state he might more learn, he more, more might learn by word or action marked. About them round a lion now he stalks with fiery glare, then as a tiger who by chance hath spied in some purlieu, two gentle fawns at play, straight couches close, then rising changes oft his couchant watch, as one who chose his ground, whence rushing he might surer seize them both, gripped in each paw. When Adam first of men to first of women, Eve, thus moving speech, turned him all ear to hear new utterance flow. Sole partner and sole part of all these joys, dearer thyself than all, needs must the power that made us, and for us this ample world be infinitely good, and of his good as liberal and free as infinite, that raised us from the dust, and placed us here in all this happiness, who at his hand have nothing merited, nor can perform aught whereof he hath need. He who requires from us no other service than to keep this one, this easy charge, of all the trees in paradise that bear delicious fruits, so various, not to taste that only tree of knowledge, planted by the tree of life. So near grows death to life, what e'er death is. Some dreadful thing, no doubt, for well thou knowest, God has pronounced it to taste that tree, has pronounced it death to taste that tree. The only sign of our obedience left, among so many signs of power and rule conferred upon us, and dominion given over all other creatures that possess earth, air, and sea. Then let us not think hard one easy prohibition who enjoy free leave so large to all things else, and choice unlimited of manifold delights. But let us ever praise him and extol his bounty, following our delightful task to prune these growing plants and tend these flowers, which were at toilsome yet with thee were sweet. To whom Eve thus replied, O thou for whom and from whom I was formed flesh of thy flesh, and without whom am to no end my guide and head, what thou hast said is just and right, for we to him indeed all praises owe, and daily thanks. I chiefly who enjoy so far the happier lot, enjoying thee preeminent by so much odds, while thou, like consort to thyself, canst nowhere find. That day I oft remember when from sleep I first awaked, and found myself reposed under a shade on flowers, much wondering where and what I was, whence thither brought, and how. Not distant far from thence a murmuring sound of waters issue from a cave, cave and spread into a liquid plain, then stood unmoved, pure as the expanse of heaven. I thither went with unexperienced thought, and laid me down on the green bank to look into the clear, smooth lake, that to me seemed another sky. As I bent down to look just opposite, a shape within the watery gleam appeared, bending to look on me. I started back, it started back, but pleased I soon returned. Pleased it returned as soon with answering looks, looks of sympathy and love. There I had fixed mine eyes till now, and pined with vain despair, had not a voice thus warned me. What thou seest, what there thou seest, fair creature, is thyself. With thee it comes and goes, but follow me, and I will bring thee where no shadow stays. Thy coming and thy soft embraces, he whose image thou art, him thou shalt enjoy inseparably, inseparably thine, to him shalt bear multitudes like thyself, and thence be called mother of human race. What could I do but follow straight, invisibly thus led, till I espied thee, fair indeed and tall, under a platen, platen. yet me thought less fair, less winning, soft, less amiably, amiably mild, than what smooth watery image. Back I turn, thou following criest aloud, Return, fair Eve, whom fliest thou? Whom thou fliest, of him thou art, His flesh, his bone, to give thee being, I lent out of my side to thee, Nearest my heart, substantial life, To have thee by my side. 
Henceforth an individual, solace dear, part of my soul I seek thee, and thee, and thee claim my other half. With that thy gentle hand sees mine, I yield and from that time see how beauty is excelled by manly grace, and wisdom which alone is truly fair. So spake our general mother, and with eyes of conjugal attraction unreproved, and meek surrender, half embracing, leaned on our first father, half her swelling breast, naked met his under, the flowing gold of her loose tresses hid. He in delight, both of her beauty and submissive charms, smiled with superior love, as Jupiter on Juno smiles, when he impregns the clouds, that shed May flowers, and pressed her matron lip with kisses pure, aside the devil turned for envy, Yet with jealous leer malign, I them askance, and to himself thus plained. Sight hateful, sight tormenting, thus these two, imparadised in one, other's, one another's arms, the happier Eden shall enjoy their fill of bliss on bliss, while to hell, I to hell am thrust, where neither joy nor love, but fierce desire, among our other torments not the least, still, unf still unfulfilled with pain of longing pines, yet let me not forget what I have gained from their own mouths, all is not theirs, it seems, one fatal tree there stands of knowledge called, forbidden them to taste, knowledge forbidden? Suspicious, reasonless, why should their Lord envy them that? Can it be sin to know, can it be death? And do they only stand by ignorance? Is that their happy state, the proof of their obedience and their faith? O fair foundation laid whereon to build their ruin, hence I will excite their minds with more desire to know, and to reject envious commands, invented with design to keep them low, whom knowledge might exalt, equal with gods, aspiring to be such, they taste and die, what likelier can ensue? But first, with narrow search, I must walk round this garden, and no corner leave unspied. A chance, but chance, may lead where I may meet some wandering spirit of heaven by fountain side or in thick shade retired from him to draw what further would be learnt. Live while ye may, yet happy pair. Enjoy till I return short pleasures, for long woes are to succeed. So saying, his proud step he scornful turned, but with sly circumspection, and began through wood, through waste, or hill, or dale his roam. Meanwhile, in utmost longitude, where heaven with earth and ocean meets, the setting sun slowly descended, and with right aspect against the eastern gate of paradise levelled his evening rays. It was a rock of alabaster piled up to the clouds, conspicuous far, winding with one ascent, accessible from earth, one entrance high. The rest was craggy cliff that overhung still as it rose, impossible to climb. Betwixt these rocky pillars, Gabriel sat, chief of the angelic guards, awaiting night. About him exercised heroic games, the unarmed youth of heaven. But nigh at hand, celestial armoury, shields, helms, and spears, hung high with diamond flaming and with gold. Thither came Uriel, gliding through the even on a sunbeam, swift as a shooting star in autumn thwarts the night. When vapours fired impress the air, and shows the mariner from what point of his compass to beware impetuous winds. He thus began in haste, Gabriel, to thee thy course by lot hath given charge and strict watch that to this happy place no evil thing approach or enter in. This day at height of noon came to my sphere a spirit, zealous as he seemed to know more of the Almighty's works and chiefly man, God's latest image. I described his way, bent on all, bent all on speed, and marked his airy gait, but in the mount that lies from Eden north, where he first lighted, soon discerned his looks alien from heaven, with passions foul obscured. Mine eye pursued him still, but under shade lost sight of him. One of the banished crew, I fear, hath ventured from the deep to raise new troubles. Him thy care must be to find. To whom the winged warrior thus returned, Uriel, no wonder if thy perfect sight amid the sun's bright circle where thou sittest see far and wide, in at this gate none pass, the vigilance here place, but such as come well known from heaven, and since meridian hour no creature thence, 
If spirit of other sorts so minded have overleaped these earthly bounds, on purpose, hard thou knowest it to exclude spiritual substance with corporeal bar. But if within the circuit of these walks, in whatever shape he lurks, of whom thou tellest by morrow dawning I shall know. So promised he, and Uriel to his charge returned on that bright beam, whose point now raised bore him slope downward to the sun now form, beneath the Azores, whether the prime orb, incredible how swift, had thither rolled diurnal, or to this less, less voluble earth, by shorter flight to the east, had left him there, arraying with reflected purple and gold the clouds that on his western throne attend. Now came still evening on, and twilight grey had in her sober, sober livery all things clad. Silence accompanied for beast and bird, they to their grassy couch, these to their nests, were slunk, all but the wakeful nightingale. She all night long her amorous descant sung. Silence was pleased, now glowed the firmament with living sapphires. Hesperus, that led the starry host, rode brightest, till the moon, rising in clouded majesty at length, Apparent queen unveiled her peerless light, and all the dark her silver mantle threw. When Adam thus to Eve, fair consort, the hour of night, and all things now retired to rest, mindest of like repose, since God hath set labour and rest as day and night to men successive, and the timely dew of sleep now falling with soft slumberous weight inclines our eyelids. Other creatures all day long rove idle and employed, and less need rest. Man hath his daily work of body or mind appointed, which declares his dignity and the regard of heaven on all his ways, while other animals in active range and of their doings God takes no account. Tomorrow, ere fresh mornings streak the east with first approach, first approach of light, we must be risen and at our pleasant labour to reform yon flowery arbours, yonder alleys green. Our walk at noon with branches overgrown that mock our scant manuring and require more hands than ours to lop their wanton growth. These blossoms also, and these dropping gums that lie bestrewn, bestrown, unsightly and unsmooth, ask riddance, if we mean to tread with ease. Meanwhile, as nature wills, night bids us rest. To whom thus Eve, with perfect beauty adorned, my author and disposer, what thou bids unargued I obey, so God ordains, God is thy law, is thy law, thou mine. To know no more is woman's happiest knowledge and her praise. With thee conversing I forget all time, all seasons and their change, all pleas alike. Sweet is the breath of morn, her rising sweet. With charm of earliest birds, pleasant the sun when first on this delightful land he spreads his orient beams, on herb, tree, flute and f fruit and flower, Blistering with dew, fragrant the fertile earth after soft showers, and sweet the coming on of grateful evening mild. Then silent night with this her solemn bird, and this fair moon, and these the gems of heaven, her starry train. But neither breath of morn when she ascends with charm of earliest birds. Nor rising sun on this delightful land, nor herb, fruit, flower. Sorry. Glistering with dew, nor fragrance after showers, nor grateful evening mild, nor silent night, with this her solemn bird, nor walk by moon, or glittering starlight, without thee is swept. But wherefore all night long shine these, for whom this glorious sight, when sleep has shut all eyes? To whom our general ancestor replied, Daughter of God and man, accomplished Eve, those have their course to finish round the earth, by morrow evening and from land to land in order. Though to nations yet unborn, ministering light prepared, they set and rise, lest total darkness should by night regain her old possession, and extinguish life in nature and all things, which these soft fires not only enlighten, but with kindly heat of various influence ferment and warm, temper and nourish, or in part shed down their stellar virtue on all kinds that grow on earth may hereby apter to receive perfection from the sun's more potent ray. These then, though unbeheld in deep of night, shine not in train, nor think, though men were none, that heaven would want spectators, 
God want praise. Millions of spiritual creatures walk the earth, and seen both when we wake and where we, when we sleep. All these with ceaseless praise his works behold, both day and night. How often from the steep of echoing hill or thicket have we heard celestial voices to the midnight air, soul or responsive, each to each other's note, sing their great creator, often in bands while they keep watch, or nightly roundings walk. With heavenly touch of instrumental sounds in full harmonic number join, their songs divide the night and lift our thoughts to heaven. Thus talking hand in hand alone they passed on to their blissful bower, and it was a place chosen by the sovereign planter when he framed all things to man's delightful use. The roof of thickest covert was inwoven shade, laurel and myrtle, and what higher grew of firm and fragrant leaf. On either side acanthus and each odorous bushy shrub fenced up the verdant wall, each beauteous flower, iris all hues, roses and jessamine, reared high their flourished heads between, and wrought mosaic underfoot the violet. Crocus and hyacinth, with rich inlay, broidered the ground, more coloured than was stone, of costliest emblem. Other creature here, beast, bird, insect, or worm, durst enter none. Such was their awe of man. In shadier bough, more sacred and sequestered, though but feigned, Pan or Sylvanus never slept, nor Nim nor Faunus haunted. Here in close recess, with flowers, garlands, and sweet-smelling herbs, a spouse and Eve decked first her nuptial bed, and heavenly choirs the Hymenians sung, what day the genial angel to our sire brought her in naked beauty more adorned, more lovely than Pandora, whom the gods endowed with all their gifts, and O too like in sad event, when to the unwiser son of Japhet, brought by Hermes, she ensnared mankind with her fair looks, be avenged on him who had stole Jove's, Jove's authentic fire. Thus at their shady lodge arrived, both stood, both turned, and under open sky adored the god that made both sky, earth, air, earth, and heaven, which they beheld, the moon's resplendent globe and starry pole. Thou also madest the night, maker omnipotent, and thou the day, which we in our appointed work employed have finished happy in our mutual help and mutual love. The crown of all our bliss ordained by thee, and this delicious place for us too large, where thy abundance wants partakers, and uncropped falls to the ground. But thou hast promised from us too a race to fill the earth, who shall with us extol thy goodness infinite, both when we awake and when we seek as now the gift of sleep. This said, unanimous and other rites, observing none but adoration pure, which God likes best, into their inmost bower handed they went, and eased the putting off these troublesome disguises which we wear, straight side by side were laid, nor turned I ween, Adam from his fair spouse, nor Eve the rites mysterious of connubial love refused, whatever hypocrites austerely talk of purity and place and innocence. Defaming is impure what God declares, pure and commands to some, leaves free to all. Our Maker bids increase, who bids, who bids abstain, but our destroyer, foe to God and man. Hail, wedded love, mysterious law, true source of human offspring, sole propriety, in paradise of all things common else. By thee adulterous lust was driven from men among the bestial herds to range by thee, founded in reason, loyal, just, and pure. Relations dear, and all the charities of father, son, and brother first were known. Far be it that I should write thee sin or blame, or think thee unfitting, unbefitting holiest place. Perpetual fountain of domestic sweets, whose bed is undefiled and chaste pronounced, present or past as saints and patriarchs used. Here love his golden shafts employ, here lights his constant lamp and waves his purple wings, reigns here and revels, not in the bought smile of harlots, loveless, joyless, unendeared, casual fruition, nor in court amours, armors, mixed dance or wanton mask or midnight ball, or a serenade which the starved lover sings to his proud fair best quitted with, dis with disdain. These lulled by nightingales, embracing slept, and on their naked limbs the flowery roof showered roses, which the morn repaired. Sleep on, blessed pair, 
and oh yet happiest if you seek no happy estate and know to know no more. Now had night measured with her shadowy cone halfway uphill this vast sublunar vault. And from their ivory port the cherubim force issuing at the accustomed hour stood armed to their night watchers in warlike parade. When Gabriel to his next in power thus spake, Uziel, half these draw off, and coast the south with strictest watch. These other wheel the north, our circuit meets full west. As flame they part, half wheeling to the shield, half to the spear. From these two strong and subtle spirits he called, that near him stood, and gave them thus in charge. Ethereal and Zephon, with winged speed, search through this garden, leave search, unsearched no nook, but chiefly where these two creatures lodge. Now laid perhaps asleep, secure of harm, this evening from the sun's decline arrived, who tells of some infernal spirit seen, hitherwards bent, who could have thought, escaped, the bars of hell, on errand bad, no doubt, such where ye find, seize fast, and hither bring. So saying, on he led his radiant files, dazzling the moon, these to the bower direct, in search of whom they sought. Him there they found squat like a toad, close at the ear of Eve, a sign by his devilish art to reese, reach the organs of her fancy, and with them fords illusions as he list, phantasms and dreams, or if inspiring venom he might taint the animal spirits that from pure blood arise, like gentle breaths from rivers pure, thence raise at least distempered, discontented thoughts. Vain hopes, vain aims, inordinate desires, blown up with high conceits and gendering pride. Him thus intent, ethereal with his spear touched lightly, for no falsehood can endure a touch of celestial temper, but returns a force to its own likeness. Up he starts, discovered and surprised, as when a spark lights on a heap of nitrous powder lay, fit for the ton, some magazine to store, against a rumoured wall. The smutty grain with sudden blaze diffused inflames the air, so started up in his own shape the fiend. Back stepped those two fair angels, half amazed, so sudden to behold the grisly king, yet thus unmoved with fear, accost him soon. Which of these rebel spirits adjudged to hell comest thou, escaped thy prison and transformed? Why sattest thou like an enemy in wait, here watching at the head of these that sleep? Know ye not then, said Satan, filled with scorn, know ye not me, ye knew me once no mate, for you, there sitting where ye durst not soar, not to know me argues yourselves unknown, the lowest of your throng, or if ye know, why ask ye, and superfluous begin your message, like to end as much in vain, to whom thus Zephon, answering scorn with scorn, think not revolted spirit thy shape the same or undiminished brightness to be known as when thou stoodest in heaven upright and pure that glory then when thou no more was good departed from thee and thou remit resemblance now thy, th thy sin and place of doom obscure and foul but come for thou be sure shalt give account to him who sent us whose charge is to keep this place inviolable and these from harm so spake the cherub, and his grave rebuke, severe in youthful beauty, added grace invincible, abashed the devil stood, and felt how awful goodness is, and saw virtue in her shape, how lovely, saw and pined his loss. But chiefly to find here observed his lustre visibly impaired, yet seemed undaunted. If I must contend, said he, best with the best, the sender not the sent, or all at once more glory will be won, or less be lost. Thy fear, said Zephon bold, will save us trial what the least can do, single against thee wicked and thence weak. The fiend replied not, overcome with rage, but like a proud steed reined, went haughty on, champing his iron curb, to strive or fly, he held it vain, or from above had quelled his heart, not else dismayed. Now drew they nigh the western point, where those half-rounding guards just met, and closing stood in subquadron joined, awaiting next command. To whom their chief Gabriel from the front thus called aloud, O friends, I hear the tread of nimble feet hasting this way, and now by glimpse discern Ethuriel and Zephon through the shade, and with them comes a third of regal port, but faded splendour wan, who by his gait and fierce demeanour seems the prince of hell, not likely to part hence without contest. Stand firm, for in his look defiance lows. 
He scarce hath ended when those two approached and brief related what they brought, when fa where found and how busied, in what form and posture couched, to which stern regard thus Gabriel smoke, spoke. Why hast thou, Satan, broke the bounds prescribed to thy transgression, and disturbed the charge of others, who approve not to transgress by, the, by thy example, but have power and right to question thy bold entrance on this place? Employed, it seems, to violate sleep, and those whose dwelling, and those whose dwelling God hath planted here in bliss, to whom thus Satan, with contemptuous brow, Gabriel, thou hadst in heaven the esteem of wise, and such I held thee, but this question asked put me in doubt. Live there who loves his pain, who would not finding way break loose from hell, though thither doomed. Thou wouldst thyself, no doubt, and boldly venture to whatever place, farthest from pain, where thou mightst hope to change, torment with ease, and soonest recompense, dull with delight, which in this place I sought, to thee no reason, who knowest only good, but evil hast not tried, and wilt object his will who bound us. Let him sure rebar his iron gates, if he intends our stay in that dark durance. Thus much what was asked. The rest is true. They found me where they say. But that implies not violence or harm. Thus he in scorn. The warlike angel moved disdainfully, half smiling, thus replied, O loss of one in heaven to judge of wise, since Satan fell, whom folly overthrew, now returns him from his prison scaped, gravely in doubt whether to hold them wise, or not who ask what boldness brought them hither, unlicensed from his bounds in hell prescribed, so wise he judges it to fly from pain, however, and to escape his punishment. So judge thou still, presumptuous, till the wrath which thou incurrest by flying, Meet thy flight, sevenfold, and scourge that wisdom back to hell, which taught thee yet no better, that no pain can equal anger infinite provoked. But wherefore thou alone, wherefore with thee came not all hell broke loose? Is pain to them less pain, less to be fled, or there thou than they less hardy to endure? Courageous chief, the first in flight from pain, hadst thou alleged to thy deserted host this cause of flight, Thou surely hadst not come so fugitive. To which the fiend thus answered, frowning stern, Not that I less endure or shrink from pain, insulting angel. Well thou knowest, I stood thy fiercest, when in battle to thy aid the blasting volley of thunder, volleyed thunder made all speed, and seconded not thy, and seconded thy else not dreaded spear. But still thy words at random as before argue thy inexperience what behoves from hard assize and ill successes past, a faithful leader not to hazard all through ways of danger by himself untried. I therefore, I alone first undertook to win the desolate abyss and spy this new created world where often hell fame is not silent. Here in hope to find better abode and my afflicted powers to settle here on earth or in midair. They for possession put to try once more what thou and thy gay legions dare against, whose easier business were to serve their Lord high up in heaven, with songs to him his throne, and practice distances to cringe, not fight, to whom the warrior angel soon replied, to say and straight unsay, pretending first wise to fly pain, professing next the spy, argues no leader but a liar traced. Satan, and couldst thou faithful add, O name, O sacred name of faithfulness profane, faithless to whom, to thy rebellious crew, army of fiends, fit body to fit head, was this your discipline and faith engaged, your military obedience to dissolve allegiance to the acknowledged power supreme, and thou, sly hypocrite, who now would seem patron of liberty, who more than thou once fawned in cringe and servilely adored heaven's awful monarch, wherefore but in hope to dispossess him and thyself to reign, but mark what I read thee now avaunt, fly thither whence thou fledst. If from this hour within these hallowed limits thou appear, back to the infernal pit I drag thee chained and seal thee so, as henceforth not to scorn the facile gates of hell, not t too slightly barred. So threatened he, but Satan to no threats gave heave, heed, and waxing more in rage replied, Then, when I, when I am thy captive talk of chains, Proud limitry 
cherub. But ere then far heavier load thyself expect to feel from my prevailing arm, though heaven's king ride on thy wings, and thou with thy compeers, used to the yoke, drawest his triumphant wheels in progress through the road of heaven star paved. While thus he spake, the angelic squadron bright and fiery red, sharpening in mooded horns their phalanx, and began to hem him round with ported spears, as thick as when a field of ceres ripe for harvest but waving bends, her bearded grove of ears, which way the wind sways them, the careful ploughman doubting stands, lest on the threshing floor his hopeful sheaves prove chaff. On the other side, Satan alarmed, collecting all his might dilated, stood like Tenerife or Atlas removed. His stature reached the sky, and on his crest sat horror plume, nor wanted in his grasp what seemed both spear and shield. Now dreadful deeds might have ensued, nor only paradise in this commotion, but the starry cope of heaven perhaps, or all the elements at least had gone to wreck, disturbed and torn with violence of this conflict, had not soon the eternal to prevent such horrid fray hung forth in heaven his golden scales, yet seen betwixt Astria and the scorpion's sign, wherein all things created first he weighed, the pendulous round earth with balanced air in counterpoise, now ponders all events, battles and realms, in these two he put two weights, the sequel eats of parting and of fight, the latter quick up flew, and kicked the beam, which Gabriel spying thus bespake the fiend. Satan, I know thy strength, and thou knowest mine, neither our own but given. What folly then to boast what arms can do, since thine no more than heaven permits, nor mine, though doubled now, to trample thee as mire, for proof look up, and read thy lot in young, yon celestial sign, where thou art weighed, and show how light thou weak, if thou resist. The fiend looked up, and knew his mounted scale aloft, nor more but fled murmuring, and with him fled the shades of night. And that's book four.